Hello and welcome to our third Clearing Live this week. Um, and today I'm joined by Dr. Paul Sant, who is the head of the School of Computer Science and Technology. Good morning, Paul. Good morning, Pete. Um, we may have some questions coming in. We've, we've got some already through some of our socials, but if anybody wants to ask a question during um, our live session now, then just pop it in the comments box and um, we'll try and answer them best we can. But also, if you are watching this after the live broadcast has ended, you can also add your questions um, and we will get back to you. Um, Paul, just a little start about um, the, the school, really. Um, you tell us a little bit about what's, uh, what's on offer um, within the School of Computer Science and Technology. Yeah, absolutely, Pete, and good morning, everybody. So I'm the Head of School of Computer Science and Technology. And in terms of what we offer, a full range of courses going from things like artificial intelligence and robotics for those who are very hands-on and practically oriented through to things like computer animation and visual effects and computer games development for those budding gamers and the people who want to create the next halos. And then we have some more traditional offerings like computer science, which gives you a broad understanding of the theoretical principles around computing and also aspects such as computer networking, cybersecurity, and on the engineering side, because we're not just a school of computing, we also have electronic, electronic engineering, we have automotive engineering, and we have mechanical engineering. So pretty much we offer a really broad range of courses that provide routes into many interesting careers. Great, well thanks Paul. Um, we've got a question that's come in about um, campus location. Where are the, um, where are the courses within your school taught? Okay, that's a really good question. So in terms of our main location, we are located in the centre of Luton in our Park Square campus and we occupy the ground floor and first floor in the what we call the Park Square building and we also occupy two floors in our relatively speaking new STEM building. Uh, the ground floor is dedicated to engineering including artificial intelligence and robotics construction and the built environment. And on the first floor, we have facilities for telecommunications and networking. So we're currently redeveloping those ready for September with some really new, brand new, what we call server racks that will have switches and routers in there and students will be able to configure those and build their own networks. And then we have labs for software engineering, for data science and for our broad information technology provision. But exciting for September 2021, we're also expanding our developments to the Bedford campus. So we are offering our BSc Honours Information Technology at our Bedford campus. So we operate mainly out of those two campuses. Fab, thank you. And the STEM building, like you say, relatively new, a £40 million um, investment a couple of years ago for the university, and the facilities are pretty good in there. I mean, it's been such a shame the last year we've not been on campus to enjoy them, but um, anyone joining the university um, this September in for a treat if they're using the facilities within within that building, aren't they? Um, we've got one here around um, accreditation of courses. Are any of our courses accredited? They are indeed. So we have uh, quite a few of our courses that are accredited. So our computer science and computer networking courses are accredited by a professional body called the Bridge Computer Society, also known as the Institute for IT. Uh, so anybody who joins our undergraduate courses in computer science and computer networking upon graduation can uh, secure relatively quickly after graduation, the initials CITP after their name, which means Chartered Information Technology Professional. We also have our electronic engineering accredited by the Institution for Engineering and Technology. And two years after graduation with work experience, you can gain the chartered engineer status. And that is a real badge of honor and expectation for anybody who's going to become a professional engineer. We're working towards accreditation through the Institution of Mechanical Engineering or IMEC-E for our automotive and mechanical engineering. So we're not quite there yet, uh, but hopefully those joining us in September 2021 will, by the end of their course, be able to gain a membership of that and the appropriate letters after their name. And finally, uh, hot off the press, our construction the built environment courses. So our BSc honors in construction management 
and our foundation degree in construction management have been accredited by the Chartered Association of Building Engineers. So that also a badge of honor for anybody undertaking those courses. Brilliant. So in short, yes, they're accredited. <laughs> Indeed, <laughs> yes. Brilliant. A lot of detail. There. Thank you for that, Paul. That's brilliant. Um, if any of the courses that Paul has mentioned um, are courses that you want to apply for, want more information on, um, just go to the website beds.ac.uk forward slash clearing. There's a full list of courses on there with all the information, um, um, even breakdowns of kind of the modules that you'll be studying throughout your time at Bedfordshire. Um, one here on expertise, Paul, um, and it kind of it just says, what's the expertise in the department? So that's a good question, an interesting one. So we all have uh, a range of different levels of expertise. So there are people who have worked in industry for a period of time. There are, and they may well have taken on uh, professional roles within industry, or they may have worked for research and development departments within industry. A lot of experience in terms of consultancy. So we work very closely with our innovation and enterprise or research and enterprise service in and around projects for business. Uh, so, for example, things like knowledge transfer partnerships and just helping business along the way in terms of allowing IT uh, to enable those businesses. And of course, we have a real wealth of experience in different ranges of pedagogy, a lot we've developed over the last couple of years in terms of blended learning and how we can deliver education at a distance and in a very flexible manner. Because as a widening participation university, we understand that from time to time, people can't come onto campus either because they have to work to support themselves or they've got childcare, for example. And so we have developed a whole range of expertise in online teaching. And you've mentioned um, experts. Um, that are teaching with industry um, industry background. So we've got strong industry links. Yeah, we've got very strong industry links. So in construction, the built environment, for example, uh, those students who joined us last year have benefited despite the pandemic from 25 guest lectures from industry leaders, uh, JJ Rattigan, for example, Morgan Sindel, uh, the biggest design construction company in the UK. Uh, I won't rattle off the name of 20, otherwise it will take us about 20 minutes to get through those. Uh, and yes, we've got very strong links with computing organizations, large and small. Uh, and in engineering, we work very closely with people like Jaguar Land Rover, for example. Uh, um, what's coming on in, um, Instagram is um, about where do you go after, after your degree? Where are students going? What are they doing? The world is your oyster. Um, the thing about computing is it affects and touches everyday life. So you could be going and working for IBM or Facebook or Google. You could be going to work for a startup, for example, where there might be three of you or six of you working in that startup. Uh, or you could be taking on further study. So a lot of our students decide to go on and study a master's degree or they look to take on a research degree. But in terms of a range of, of, of qualifications, too many to mention, but software development, software engineering, uh, a product engineer, a junior engineer, a junior software developer, a web developer, uh, network analyst, cybersecurity analyst are just some, uh, and, and probably only at the tip of the iceberg from the, the computing and engineering, and from construction into construction management, uh, into things like civil engineering or potentially then taking on careers and building those up in quantity surveying. Am I right in thinking that some of our um, graduates who've gone on to um, create startups have been supported by the university as well? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, a while ago now, but back in 2011, we had a Lithuanian student who graduated. Uh, his final project was to develop a social network platform for Lithuania. Uh, which he then went back and launched in Lithuania. He retained those links as an alumnus of the university and worked with our innovation and enterprise service. Uh, another example, I uh, hope he doesn't mind me name checking him, but uh, Usman Ali, who was one of our software engineering graduates back in 2017, 
uh, came back and supported us uh, in a knowledge transfer partnership for a company in Letchworth, for example. So yes, the university re remains and retains very strong links with innovation and enterprise, and we look to be able to help and support our alumni where we can. Fantastic. Um, if there are any more questions that come in after this um, live broadcast, um, please do ask them. We will um, answer them all and work our way through um, the answers for you. Um, as I say, take a look at the website, full list of courses at beds.ac.uk forward slash clearing. Um, so finally, Paul, um, I'll ask you, what would be your advice to anyone who's thinking of applying for a course within the School of Computer Science and Technology at Bedfordshire? Come with a passion, explore your passion, and put in lots of effort, not just in your academic work, which of course is vital, but also in gaining experience. So use your Christmas break, your Easter break, your summer break to go out and secure some internships, even if it is a two week internship or a month long internship, that's gonna really stand you in good stead because you understand how to work in business, how you operate in business and how you can succeed in business. Brilliant. And I did say finally, but we have just, I think we've got time to sneak yeah, one, we got in one question here. on Facebook. Could you tell us about the postgraduate, um, the MSc of Computer Science? Yeah, absolutely. So in terms of the uh, postgraduate MSc in Computer Science, so in terms of course structure, it has four taught units, uh, intelligence systems and data mining, uh, distributed and parallel computing technologies, one around um, network and systems administration. So learning about how uh, computer systems are put together, how do they communicate effectively, how do you build them? And then one in and around project management and developing those project management skills. And then it culminates, the final thing that you do will be your final project where you can explore any area of computer science. So it could be cybersecurity, it could be software engineering, software development, or another area which I haven't mentioned. But that is somewhere where you can really do a substantial piece of work that you can take to an employer and say, okay, well, this is what I am capable of. This is what you could potentially experience of if you were to employ me. Brilliant. Thank you so much for that overview. Um, I hope that answers Simon's question. And thank you for your time today, um, Paul. Um, much appreciated. Thank you very You're much. You're most welcome and really good to speak to everybody today. Thank you. Take care.